Hey everybody, welcome back. We're talking about the second section of chapter six, uh, practice of statistics, that's in um, the fourth unit that College Board has set up for the AP Stats exam. Um, we're going through the, I use the Stats Medic curriculum um, in terms of the activities we're going from day to day, so we're on the second one of those. And so, it talks about paying your students. So we come up with this mythical job, and what ends up happening is you randomly give students numbers, one through 25. And so I have them write them down because you're going to end up actually using this for a number of days because you're going to end up getting a raise and you know, all that other good stuff. Um, invariably, there's not a lot of high paying jobs, but there's a lot of lower paying jobs. And so in my class today, we just did this, um, we had 22 students. Six of them got paid a dollar a day, five of them, or six of them got paid five dollars a day, three of them got paid seven dollars a day, three got paid ten dollars a day, three got paid fifteen dollars a day, and one of them got paid twenty five dollars a day. And so you go through and you ask them to do a bunch of different things. So what were the first thing that we kind of re ask you guys to go through and do a review from yesterday is what is the expected value? Now remember the expected value is the sum of the different values times the, uh, per, the um, corresponding probability. And that's what this little I means. It just kind of tells you it's, an, it's called, it stands for index. So I mean the first number, the second number, the third number, the fourth number, et cetera. So to get that, we want one times six point or six six twenty seconds, five times six twenty seconds, seven times three twenty seconds, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. When we did all of that, it came up with a wonderful expected value or average salary of seven dollars and fourteen cents per day. And so, um, what does that mean? If we randomly draw many, many wages, the average wage is about seven dollars and fourteen cents. Again, remember. It's going to be in the long term what's going to happen. And then also remember it's about because it is an estimate. Now we go back, way back to chapter one and review standard deviation. And so what ends up happening is before we worry about this, we go over here and we take all of our values here and we do distance, my, distance from the mean. So my mean is $7.14. So 1 minus 7.14 is 6, 4, negative 6.14, et cetera, et cetera. And so those are all my values. And then you square the distance from that. Now the difference is much like with the expected value from yesterday where we had to weight each of these values by the probability. And remember, it kind of works out, pardon me, um, because the six is telling you how many times the item happens and the 22 is doing the division for you. We need to do the same thing over here. So we're taking this, and this is gonna be weighted the most because it happens the most, actually that in the five. And so I'm going to take 37.7, multiply by 620 seconds, and I get a value of 10.282, and do the same thing across here. So it's the same, this is almost the exact same setup as what we did for the standard deviation project. The only difference that we're doing here is that we're multiplying through by the probabilities so we can scale the influence of each of these numbers, okay? So like the 25, far away, really far away, but it only happens once. And so this, has only twice as much influence as the 15, and um, not even twice as much influence as the 10, or as the one, which has a distance of 10, okay? Couple reminders, you total them all up, and we take the square root of that to figure out what your standard deviation is, okay? So we have a standard deviation of 6.04. Now, because of what I was doing, I went through and I said, okay, here's the standard deviation formula. And again, remember, we do get a lot of the formulas here in AP Stats, which is great. So it's the square root of the sum of the squares times the corresponding probability. All right. So in terms of interpreting the, <coughs> excuse me, standard deviation. And again, this is not all that different than what we did for chapter one. The wages typically vary by $6.04, because that's my standard deviation, from the mean wage of $7.14, okay? So when you're talking about standard deviation, you're saying the wages typically vary the standard deviation amount from the mean wage of this amount. Okay, hopefully that's ringing some bells in the back of your head. I'm not saying that you remember it perfectly, but hopefully it's there. Um, now, something a little different, it's called uniform distribution. Mr. Hayes decides that he'd rather assign wages to employees because remember, this is discrete up here, by the way, because we have individual amounts and you can't go between one and five. You can get one, you can get five, you can get seven, you can get 10, you can get 15, you can get 25. Down over here, 
Mr. Hayes decides that he would rather assign wages so employees could get any amount between $10 and $20. And all are equally likely. So you had to draw this out. So to draw, so I drew this rectangle here first. Don't worry about the, the greens down here. And so we said, okay, it's from 10 to 20. And then I asked the question, now remember, what does the area always have to be for probability? The area for probability always has to equal one. Now, um, so we're basically finding the area under the curve. From there, we can find, if we know that the area is under one, and I know that this distance here is 10, then this height has to be whatever multiplier is going to be. It's basically the multiplicative identity? No, multiplicative inverse, I'm sorry, of um, what goes here. So this is how I got the 1 tenth, because 10 times 1 tenth is equal to 1. So again, that is called the uniform distribution. Why uniform? Because it's the same all the way across. It's the same probability every single time. Now, to ask for a probability thing here, what's the probability that an employee makes between 12 and 1250? You just lop off, it's like cutting a cake, that section. And then you say, okay, what's the area of that curve? What's the area of this green shaded in area between $12 and $12.50? The width is 50 cents. The height is 1 tenth. So you end up getting an area of 5%. Okay. So again, a lot of familiar things, a little bit of a new context. We're setting up some neat stuff that we're going to finish up in Chapter 6 um, as we continue to talk about random variables. But again, as always, if you have any questions, please ask down below. Um, we're going to formalize this in the next, in the part two of the video, along with have an example there. So obviously, after you throw, hit a subscribe on the ending screen, um, jump over to there. There should be a link there too. We'll see you soon.